kiss for you. Hello, everybody, and today we're going to be talking about uh, Xbox's version of GeForce Now and Stadia, which is called xCloud. Now, if you've seen my other videos on that, you'll know that I've done a video on GeForce Now and done a video on Stadia talking about them, talking about, you know, the features, the benefits, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to check those out, you can. There will either be a link in the description or in a card or something like that. Um, but today I want to talk about xCloud. Now, xCloud, as I said, is Xbox's version of uh, this kind of cloud gaming thing that everyone's trying to do, where you can basically play games on a tablet or on a Mac or something that usually doesn't play games and stream them and have that sort of instant access experience that a lot of other um, services are trying to provide at the moment. Uh, so as you can see, you know, you have your controller, you have your, your games and stuff on your phone, on your laptop. In this case, it's a Chromebook, but you couldn't normally play these games, and they're playing them because it's uh, streaming. So I'm going to be basically going over uh, what it is, a review on it, uh, gameplay, my thoughts on it. So basically the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that it used to be a beta. It is still kind of a beta, but it used to be like a closed access beta. Now it's publicly available. So that basically means that once you sign up or join Game Pass, you'll automatically get access to it. And I guess that's the first thing I want to talk about. So typically pricing and installation. In this case, the price is included with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And the installation is there's no installation. Unlike GeForce Now, there's not anything you have to download. You can just like Stadia, go to a web browser and start it. So let's say I'm a new user and I want to join Xbox's xCloud service. I simply go to xbox.com slash play. I arrive on this Xbox Cloud Gaming Beta. If I'm not already a member of Ultimate, I click join Ultimate and this will be a $15 a month um, Ultimate membership to Game Pass, a library of a bunch of different games and accesses and that kind of stuff. And you basically join that. Uh, there's usually a promotion, a dollar for three months type of thing going on. But you join Ultimate, uh, 15 bucks or whatever and included with the games for Xbox and PC as well as the online uh, membership to to do that is the cloud gaming service so it is included it's not an extra thing or whatever it's included boxed in with that $15 a month uh, price so from here uh, you can see the kind of the promotion uh, what you need to get started this is uh, pretty important you need obviously the membership a compatible device and browser uh, and this is where we kind of get into sort of the, the nitty gritty of it. So with GeForce Now, if you remember, you didn't need anything special. You need like a controller or whatever. You could just download, uh, in this case, when I was using it in application, uh, and it would download to my Mac. I was using it uh, at the time. And you could just go in, look through games, hit play. It would play, it would connect your stuff, and then you're good to go. Uh, however, on xCloud, you need a Xbox controller, either through Bluetooth or USB. You need an Xbox compatible controller to be able to play these games. Now, this is important because it does not support keyboard and mouse currently, which really sucks. Uh, and originally, when I was making this review, it didn't tell you it didn't actually need uh, a controller. It just said it let you do it and wasn't allowing uh, that to work. So that's kind of annoying, but yeah, basically you need membership, uh, a compatible device, a controller and obviously a high-speed internet connection so then you're gonna go to sign in uh, in this case I've already signed in so it won't prompt me to log in but basically you want to log in with whatever account you have set up for this uh, for the this is service so your main account set up with uh, Microsoft and then you'll get this screen which is basically your sort of selection of a game screen now the library that you're going to be using this under is the Xbox Game Pass library. And there's a benefit and a, a downside to that. The benefit is that it's included. So unlike GeForce Now or Stadia, where you either have to, on Stadia, buy all your games for the service, or GeForce Now have the games on Steam or whatever, these games, when you pay the $15 a month or whatever, you get access to these games on both xCloud, PC, and in this case, the cloud, right? So you don't have to spend extra money to get these games, you just have access to them already, which is pretty nice. However, the downside of that, unlike something like GeForce Now, is that you only have access to these games. So if you wanted to play something like Borderlands 3, uh, you can't because Borderlands 3 is not on this um, cloud version or Xbox Game Pass in general. So it's only games that would be on Xbox Game Pass. Unlike GeForce Now, which has a wide variety of games from a large selection of uh, databases like Steam, um, Epic Game Store, that kind of stuff. So just to keep that in mind, any game you have here is only uh, on the cloud version of Xbox Game Pass, unlike effectively a limitless amount or as many as NVIDIA can carry of the other stuff. Uh, we get the screen here. It 
syncs, which is nice. Progress and stuff syncs, which is something that I'm, which is something that NVIDIA tries to do uh, with a couple of its services, but it automatically syncs all your data. So any data I have in these games will automatically pop back up again. Um, yeah, and it has anything that's recently added. So here's all the recently added games, Back for Blood, Dragon Ball Fires, Echo Generation. Here's all the games leaving, which means you won't have access to them um, after this time's up. And here's just all the selection of games. What's really nice uh, about this one is that if you have older games like Xbox 360 or Xbox original games that you want to play, you can play it on here. Uh, something that the older, something that GeForce Now and Stadia don't allow with kind of the older backwards compatible games to be on here. It will soon be on things like TVs, so eventually you'll only have to have a controller hook it up to your TV and you can play it on there, but currently that's not available. And one thing is that it actually has a future past the cloud. So unlike something with Stadia, uh, manually not downloadable, you have to only be able to use Stadia games and stuff with Stadia's uh, selection. Basically now you don't have to do that, right? You're not, you're not uh, restricted to just Stadia's ecosystem. You have these games accessible uh, in some capacity at least on a, on a desktop. So now enough of that with all the features. Uh, the limitations, as I said, it's only controller. Uh, for the time being, it's 720p only. Maybe it's gone up to 1080, but there's no like 4K or 1440p port. But yeah, so this is uh, capped at 1080, no RTX. This uh, GeForce Now is uh, 1080 with RTX or 1440 RTX if you upgrade. But we're not talking about that now. Ease of use. So we want to make it as easy as possible to play the games. So I'm on um, a PC with my uh, mouse and keyboard now. So we'll see gameplay in a moment. Let's say I want to go and open up a game I don't have downloaded, let's say Back for Blood, right? I click on it, it shows all the information about it, has the icon, has a play with controller thing, um, and then it has all the information here. Now, if I go click play, you'll see a little symbol here, and it will tell me that something's not quite right. My browser supported either support network, but my controller is disconnected. This screen is relatively new. When I originally started to think about this video, this did not show up, and so I clicked play, and I was like, why isn't anything working? And then you realize, oh, the controller, uh, you need a controller for it to recognize that. So yeah, it will tell you if your controller is disconnected or idle. Once you connect it, it will go back to normal and then you can play. Click the Xbox button, it goes back to the beginning and you're basically all set to go. There's a search bar at the top, cloud beta thing, and the Xbox take you back to home. No setup process for this one. You can just click like Arc for instance. Oh, but yeah, that's the thing is that jump back in, you just click it and it automatically starts. You don't have to even go through the whole like click on it, then click play. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Stadia had something similar to that. So now we're going to get into gameplay. So uh, the stuff you should be seeing on screen now is the gameplay of it. And I just want to say basically that it's a lot more variable than I would have liked. You know, people were complaining about my GeForce Now one where I said, oh, it's not, um, it's like not that good visually or there's compression or whatever. People were complaining about that because all of them have that. And you're right, but at least for me, right, it's a kind of subjective thing of GeForce Now for me was a lot of um, compression and sort of stuttering and stuff. And my Stadia thing wasn't a lot of stuttering. It just happened to not be when I was recording it. So I said Stadia was better than GeForce Now in terms of gameplay and day-to-day -day, um, use uh, in terms of like the visuals and how they were presented. And people were annoyed at that and that's mainly because in what I experienced, I was experiencing stutter and stuff and for uh, Stadia I wasn't, right? It just wasn't a thing I was impacted by. Our uh, xCloud is kind of somewhere in the middle. I have examples where I have fantastic gameplay, um, as you'll see from like Doom Eternal, but then I have average and then awful. And I think I try to categorize that the best I can with these um, with these uh, videos here. So we have a couple of them playing. The first one is Mac. Not the first one is Mac. There's a couple of them. Uh, one of them is Mac. So one of them is talking about the experience I had on Mac playing Scarlet Nexus, which wasn't great. Obviously, it seemed weirdly compressed and grainy. So that's the first one. The second one was just general gameplay of what I would consider average gameplay with Injustice 2. There's two of them. There's the first one, which is compressed, relatively large amount of input lag uh, from it, but still mo mostly playable. And then it was um, much better the second time around. Less lag, less uh, compression uh, with that. So that was really nice. And then we had, we go to sort of like that's average, getting to be good. And then we have bad, which is arc. Arc looked awful on Xbox uh, anyway. And that's another thing is that these are running off of effectively a Series X or equivalent. And so they're using whatever the game looks like on that platform. So even if it's cloud, still using what the Xbox Series X version of Arc looks like, which is garbage. And so if that looks awful, it's not gonna look any better 
here, regardless of what your grade is. So this looks actually the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not really an exaggeration or a comparison. The next thing is Doom Eternal, which I did not expect to run nearly as well as it did. I had very little issues visually, very little compression, input lag was great, aiming and stuff was great, the speed was good, I didn't have much chopping, and it was overall a very nice experience. I was not expecting a nice experience because up to that point, majority of what I was experiencing was pretty average and not as, you know, up to the other comparison, like up to uh, GeForce Now in terms of um, compatibility, right? It was like, okay, these are running fine, but not necessarily anything better. And if I didn't need all these extra games, I already had like a Steam library, for instance, then it was um, not a really big deal. But this was running better. I was like, okay, this might have be something, you know? And so that's important for that. But I also say that it obviously like GeForce Now would vary day by day. Some days I get great performance, other days I'd get uh, kind of mediocre performance. I should note that I'm using wireless for most of this. I'm not hooked up or whatever to Ethernet because most people won't be. That's more to note. One thing I also will note, I guess, about the the library of G4 of uh, uh, XCloud is that it doesn't use my free options. So one thing that people were talking about is I said that GeForce Now was not as worth it for the ten dollars a month that they're now charging. But for people that didn't have all these uh, games on Steam, because it was mainly for people that were returning and already had games sort of available, right? There, it wasn't like a um, there was there wasn't there was a need for people that didn't have a collection of games to get a collection of games. Yeah, for like Steam, if you had like 50 games or whatever, and they worked on GeForce Now, where you can start playing. But if you didn't, you have to buy those games on Steam, and it, you know it won't be worth it. it. Didn't make sense for people that didn't already have a uh, collection. And obviously they're adding new games all the time, but that doesn't really affect you if you don't have those games to play. xCloud kind of gets rid of that problem because it gives you those games, but one thing GeForce Now to kind of did to kind of combat the fact that people that are new might not have access is put all the free games on there, right? They put all the Valorant and the uh, League of Legends and that kind of stuff. They put all those free games that people like onto the service and so people could just boot them up and not have a problem. Um, unlike X Stadia or X Cloud, they didn't do that, right? And so there's not a lot of free games in terms of like the the free to play um, competitive games and stuff that you like to see on there. There's not a lot of that. What I'm talking about really is where I think this ranks and the target audience. So I said the target audience before, but I basically think the target audience is people that are not looking for the target audience for this is people that unlike Stadia, where no one's gonna buy games, and the only reason you do Stadia is to get the free games, as it says, get free games with Stadia Pro, go to a collection of free games each month on Stadia Pro, sign up for a free trial, do that kind of stuff. Um, that's what they'd use that for. It's relatively for newcomers because people that already have a collection, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you're starting over. GeForce Now is people that already have a collection, already have that established. xCloud is for people that either have a collection and add this to them being able to play on the go and whatever, or don't have a collection and a great start, right? And I think that's really where target audience is basically, it's the best version of anyone and has relatively a lot of future proofing. Now in terms of ranking, I spent a little bit of time uh, thinking about the ranking and I think Stadia is overall the best gameplay wise of the three. GeForce Now has the best long-term sustainability in terms of if you were to buy a game, if you were new from scratch and you were to buy games, let's just say again, Far Cry 6, it was on there, uh, for example, you'd be able to play Far Cry 6 on GeForce Now, and then whenever you got a PC or something capable of running it, you could download that game that you bought, platform of choice, whatever you uh, bought that on. Or I guess PC is not really a platform of choice, but if you have Far Cry 6, you bought it on like Steam or something, and played through GeForce Now when you got a PC, you could play it. Um, and Typically, as you saw from the leaving soon, stuff leaves soon from Game Pass all the time, it won't usually on GeForce Now. So that's another uh, comparison to make. Uh, yeah, but in terms of ranking, I would consider Stadia is the best in gameplay. The, uh, X xCloud is the best if you were looking for, a, if you're a new player and you're looking for just a bunch of games to play and on the go and that kind of stuff. And that overall, it's the easiest to get into. And then GeForce Now is if you want to do that free to play, in collection and you don't have a PC or something to run that and you want like long-term sustainability. So it really just depends on your preference. Stadia is, hey, I just wanna play a couple free games. Look, it's interesting. Let me sign up for that. I don't need anything special, right? Keyboard and mouse does work for Stadia. Uh, GeForce Now is good for, you know, already have a collection, just need to play a game or two 
and xCloud is kind of the get up and get going. So overall, I think xCloud is a competitor in this space and will continue to do well, but it's for a Xbox audience, right? I don't think people that are into PC and stuff are going to necessarily use this, but it's a nice addition to your already paying for and hopefully using Game Pass subscription. So yeah, um, comment down below what you think about that, and I will try and do another one comparing all three, maybe Luna, which is Amazon's attempt at a competitor uh, later on. So I will see everyone in the new year.